Welcome back to the course of chemical crystallography. In the previous lecture, we just ended with the description of 32 crystallographic point groups where we talked about the symmetry elements and their orientations and we have identified some of them with yellow lines with yellow highlights and termed them as lave groups. So now we would like to discuss the stereographic projection of these 32 point groups. What we want to do is we want to we want to represent these 32 point groups in a two dimensional uh, manner. So for that we will follow the same type of procedure which we discussed in the previous lecture while drawing the projection for the roto inversion and roto reflection axis. First we would like to draw the point group 1. What is 1? We do not have any symmetry in 1 which means we should only draw a circle. Since we will be needing this circle a few times now, I am just making those circles available for us to draw these uh, projections one after another. So the first thing that we would like to draw is the point group 1. Space group 1 does not have any symmetry in it. So only a 360 degree rotation can bring the same molecule or same object back to its original position. So we just draw it as a closed circle and it is point group 1. When we say 1 bar, it means it is a 360 degree rotation followed by inversion, which actually means just inversion. So, when we have one object which is a closed circle at the upper hemisphere, we are trying to take its inverts and it comes to the lower hemisphere and the way the projection is understood as if you have a light at the top, you have the object here and the two positions, one is up above the equator and the other one is below the equator of this imaginary sphere are represented in two dimension. So when we have an inversion center at the center the inversion related object comes in the lower part of the sphere as open circle. The next one that we would like to see is 2. There are two different ways one can draw a twofold. If the twofold is in the plane of equator, or in the equatorial plane, then what happens is if this is a sphere, if a twofold is there from front to back, the object which is here gets rotated by this twofold and comes to the lower hemisphere on the other side. So, the open circle sorry the closed circle on the right becomes open open circle on the left by this two fold axis one can consider the two fold to be along z which means we may have the two fold in the middle of the plane of projection. So, in that case, we start from here. So, this is a twofold. My object is here, 
when it rotates it still stays in the upper hemisphere but comes to the other side of the upper circle. So, the object which is here on doing a twofold rotation comes there and still remains a closed circle. So, this is another representation of two. They are one and the same. What is two bar? A two bar operation means you have a two fold axis and inversion center. So, you start from one point here, do a two fold rotation followed by inversion takes it exactly below the original point. So, anything coming exactly below is equivalent to a mirror operation. So, two bar should look like this. The closed circle and open circle are at same place because you have this two fold axis, you are rotating the point by 180 degree and taking the inversion it goes there. So, this inverted point comes at the same place of the original point and that is why this two bar is equivalent to a mirror. Now, let us see the point groups 4 and 4 bar one after another. When we say a point group 4, it indicates that it has a fourfold axis of symmetry. At the middle, As a result, the object is, this is the fourfold axis, the object is here, it rotates by 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree and goes back to the original position by 90 degree rotation and it always stays in the upper hemisphere. So, therefore, all the four positions are field circles. But in case of four bar, the situation is slightly different. When you have this open side closed circle, what you do is rotate by 90 degree and simultaneously invert. So, it comes to the lower hemisphere. So, the closed circle after one round of four bar becomes open circle in the opposite side. So, from here the point should have come here as of a closed circle, but then since this is a four bar which is a simultaneous operation. So, we do a four fold rotation followed by inversion, it makes it as open circle. Similarly, you rotate it by 90 degree and invert it. We started with open circle, this must be a closed circle. Now, we start with this closed circle, rotate it about 90 degree and then invert it. We started with closed circle, so this should become open circle. So, now you see 4 and 4 bar are different in their representation. What happens to 4 by m? The point to be noted here is when we say 4 bar, it is roto inversion axis. So, rotation and inversion takes place simultaneously and then we identify the point, but when we write 4 by m, it means we have a fourfold axis and a mirror separately. So, we should have points corresponding to fourfold and then apply the mirror to all those four, four, those points 
generated by the said four fold. So to do that, we divide this circle in four parts. Write down the draw the four fold in the middle, and then start with the closed circle. We do a four fold as we have done before on the left hand side and it generates those four points because of four fold and now when I am saying that four by m in the previous lecture I have talked about this four by m means a four fold is along c and mirror is perpendicular to that four fold. So the mirror plane is the plane of this particular circle. So when you have mirror plane of, in the plane of the circle then all these four points which are closed circles will be reflected in the lower hemisphere. So one open circle has to be drawn at the same place. <coughs> so this then represents 4 by m. What will be 4 by m m m? In the textbook, you will see that it is written as 4 by m m m. It actually means it is a 4 by m operation and then there are two more mirrors perpendicular to that first mirror which contain the fourfold axis. So now to identify that, we first draw what we have seen in case of 4 by m. What we have seen in 4 by m is this, which is there on your left. Now when we are saying that there are two more mirrors containing the fourfold axis perpendicular to the previous mirror, then the two mirror planes should be this one and that one. So now if we try to operate these mirrors on the points that have been generated, we should simply get one more set of closed and open circle because of that mirror and because of this horizontal mirror we get one point here and we get the corresponding point there. So this represents 4 by m m m. The next one in 4 we would like to discuss is 4 bar 2 m. So now it is a combination of 3 symmetry elements. One is 4 bar which is along this C axis, Z axis, a two fold which is along A or B and a mirror which we will see gets generated between the A and B like a diagonal plane that is sigma D. So to start with what we should generate is the 4 bar as we have seen in 4 bar here on the left we should first generate the corresponding 4 bar. Now I have a 2 which means this 2 is either along x or y. So if I assume that 2 is along this direction which is here, what I end up getting is
this twofold which we are thinking is along the equatorial plane and the point above the plane on application of this twofold goes below the plane. So as a result which is open circle here sorry closed circle here becomes open circle. This open circle goes to the other side and becomes closed circle. This open circle comes to the other side and becomes closed circle and this closed circle coming on the other side becomes open circle. See what has happened. By default, by applying one two fold in one direction, it has generated another two fold in a perpendicular direction. What else has happened? It has generated a mirror plane bisecting these two two-fold axes. Two such mirror planes have already been generated. So we have two two-folds, one along x, another along y. And then we have two mirrors bisecting the x and y direction as this and that. So this particular diagram indicates the point group 4 bar to m. Now we will try to see some of the point groups which involve 3 and 6. So now let us start with simple tree. What is a threefold axis? It gives you a 120 degree rotation. So whenever we try to draw 3 or 6, we should divide the circle in 6 parts. That means we draw 3 lines like this. We have the threefold axis in the middle. We start with one object here and the threefold axis suppose is along z then the point rotates like this by 120 degree and comes here by another 120 it comes here another 120 it goes there. So by doing such operation it goes at those three places and it is just three. The next one that we would like to draw is 3 bar. What is the difference here? It is 3 and inversion simultaneously. So once again we should carefully divide the circle into 6 parts and we should start with the closed circle. So now when we are doing it 3 bar, it should be a rotation followed by inversion and becoming an open circle. This is my 3 bar axis. So now again we rotate from this point, 120 degree rotation brings it at this point and then if we do an inversion, we started with open circle, we should end up getting a closed circle. Then we continue this operation 120 degree rotation followed by inversion becomes open circle. Start with open circle 120 degree rotation followed by, followed by inversion becomes closed circle. 
once again 120 degree rotation followed by inversion becomes an open circuit. So this is the representation of 3 bar. What happens when we draw 3 bar M? We can straight away draw the 3 bar first. And when we are saying this as M, this M is not perpendicular to 3 bar, it is along the 3 bar. So we can consider this M as one of these lines. When it is 3 by M, then it is perpendicular to 3 fold, but when it is 3 M or 3 bar M, that mirror contains the threefold axis or three bar axis. So, by doing this mirror operation, what we get are just the mirror images of those points. See what we have obtained by considering one mirror along one of those straight lines containing the threefold and then applying the corresponding mirror we have generated a mirror here and we have generated another mirror there. So this particular diagram represents 3 bar M. What will happen if we want to draw 3 M? Once again we divide it into 6 parts, the threefold axis is in the center and then we would like to draw the points. So first we draw 3 because these two are not simultaneous operations, so we have just drawn 3. And when we write M, it is the mirror containing the threefold axis. So this could be a mirror like that. So this mirror reflects this point to the other side, this point on left hand side, this point on left hand side here. So what is the result? As a result, we see that it has given rise to these lines which we initially had drawn to make it 6 parts are also the corresponding mirror planes. Now let us try to draw 2 point groups, 6 bar and 6 by M, M, M. Sorry. We should draw six by M and six by M, M, M. So when we again say it is 6 by M, it means we have a 6 fold axis along Z. So we again divide this into 6 parts. The 6 fold axis that we are talking about is here. So my object which is sitting at this point. I am rotating it by 60 degree, it goes 
at all the places at rotation after rotation of 60 degree and it does not change its nature because it remains always in the upper hemisphere and then when we say by m this six fold is here and the by m mirror is perpendicular to it so the mirror plane which we have here is the equatorial plane which is the boundary line of the circle as a result these points will go below the equatorial plane after the mirror operation so the open circle and closed circle both will come at same place so now you can easily understand that what will happen if we do 6 by mmm so we again divide it into six parts the six fold axis is at the center and then I will first draw 6 by m as it is drawn on the left hand side and then the two mirrors that we are talking about are these two mirrors maybe even if we just draw one it will generate the other mirrors so this one generates the object there this mirror reflects it here the mirror reflection of this comes to the other side the mirror reflection from this point goes to the other end the mirror from here comes at this point this mirror comes on this line so as a result what has happened is it has generated the other mirrors as well and you can see there is a mirror in between so this is the representation of 6 by mmm which in textbook you will see is written as 6 by mmm now we will do two space groups which are very similar but they belong to two different uh, crystal systems as you know 3 2 belongs to trigonal system while 2 3 belongs to a cubic system when we say 3 2 we first should draw a threefold what is a threefold we have already drawn it on the first left hand top corner so the threefold can be drawn very easily and the twofold axis that we are talking about is perpendicular to this threefold which is here and there are three such two folds which are like that so now by doing this two fold operation the closed circle becomes open circle this closed circle on this side becomes open circle this closed circle becomes open circle on that side so this diagram represents a simple 3 2 point group but 2 3 is different 2 3 is, is a cubic point group and in a cube what you have are four threefold axis if you draw a cube and then from every corner to the other body diagonal other corner along the body diagonal is your threefold and there are four such threefolds and the two folds that you have are along the faces the center of the faces you have these two folds along the center of faces so drawing this uh, two three is slightly difficult so i am drawing it slowly for your easy understanding first 
I am dividing it into four parts. Then I am joining from top to bottom with a curved line. I am joining again left to right with a curved line. And then joining these points across. So now since we have four threefold axes along the body diagonals, we write those threefold axes at those four points of intersections of four lines. So now if we start putting our points, the objects, suppose we have one object here. We do a three-fold three rotation, the object comes here, we do another three-fold rotation, the object comes there about that three. Now every one of those lines which we have drawn, these lines correspond to a two-fold axis. So now what has happened is the closed circle on the right on 120, 180 degree rotation becomes open circle on the left. So this twofold, this, this closed circle on the right comes here and becomes open circle and this comes here as open circle. So the top portion is done. Now once again, this particular line which we have drawn also represents a twofold. So when we do this twofold on all the six points that we have on the upper portion, the closed circles will become open circle and the open circles will become closed circles. So then this particular diagram which we have now generated at the end is the stereographic projection of point group 2, 3. I understand this is difficult and one can only draw it when you have done this many times. You should try to practice this 2, 3, 3, 2, 6 by mmm and all these uh, point group drawings yourself to be able to draw it easily. So in the next class we will continue with the crystallographic planes, directions, Miller indices, etc.